welcome back to OPC Kids Ministry. Today we're digging into Psalm 119, but before we do that, let's take a look at our memory verse for this series. You can find it in Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. Now Psalm 119 is a song, but we don't know the tune, and it's all about how awesome God's word is. So today's part of the psalm tells us that God's word is true forever. Now it's hard to imagine that things that apply to people's lives before electricity and phones still apply to us today, but they do. We all want to be loved. We all seek happiness. We have hope. We have friends. Parents still want the best for their children. You know what I would wish would last forever? A big bowl of ice cream. Now in case you haven't figured it out yet, I would have what they would call an unhealthy relationship with ice cream. Mm -hmm. But all kidding aside, I think what I would like to see last forever is that everyone would have a childlike heart. Now it would be nice if those things all lasted forever, but we know of one thing that's forever, and that is that God's Word is true forever. God's Word is also called the Bible, and it's a special book full of God's words to us. And we can also talk to God anytime in prayer. So let's do that now. Let's pray. Dear God, help us to open our hearts and our minds so that we can better hear and feel your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today we're learning that God's word is true forever. But a lot of things in our world do change. We have things today that people in Bible times did not have, like fridges and ovens, cars and computers. There are things that your parents didn't have that we have today. I was born before Google. Yep, I'm that old. Not as old as Moses, but old. I can remember a time when our computer, when our school got its first computer. Not computers, computer. Just one for the whole school. It was called the Commodore 64, and it looked like this. I also grew up when phones stayed on walls. If you wanted to walk while you were talking, you could only walk as far as the length of the cord. Now we're gonna watch a video where a boy from Bible times and a boy from today compare their lives. So check your emails for the, for the link to the video called Then and Now, and pay attention and look out for any differences you wouldn't have thought of. We're learning that God's word is true forever. How do you think he would describe forever? Now let's listen to some verses that describe God's word and listen for the words that have a similar meaning to forever. Okay, these verses you can find in Psalm 119. Your eternal word, O Lord, stands firm in the heavens. Your regulation remains true to this day, for everything serves your plans. Even perfection has its limit, but your commands have no limit. Did you catch the words? Eternal, true, no limit. God's word is true forever. That means the Bible is just as true and meaningful to us today as it was to the people who lived a long time ago. In fact, the Bible was written over a thousand years. So in some of the Bible stories we read, they had a part of God's word. And based on the verses we just read, God's word obviously meant a lot to them. And they needed it just like we need it now. But back then, printing a ton of copies of books wasn't easy. Books had to be copied by hand, which took a really, really long time. So they didn't have a lot of copies of the Bible. In fact, there only may have been just one copy. And one time, that one copy got lost. In our Bible story today, people had turned away from God. And they didn't even realize they were missing the one copy of the Bible. But one day, a young king named Josiah had people clean up God's temple, and guess what? Someone found part of the Bible in the mess. Here's what they found. Genesis 1:27. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Exodus 20:12. Honor your father and mother, then they will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Leviticus 19.18 Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against a fellow Israelite, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Deuteronomy 6.5 
And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. Why do you think people in Josiah's time, thousands of years ago, would have needed to hear these verses? Why are these verses still important today? Well, God's word is true forever. And it's just as true and important today as it was then. In fact, all the words we just read are words from the part of the Bible Josiah found. He read the same words we just read. Isn't that cool? Now, in our Bible story, there was a woman named Huldah who was a prophetess. And Huldah helped King Josiah know that he needed to listen to God's word and be really, really sorry for disobeying it. So listen to what Josiah did. We read in 2 Kings 23, verse 1 to 3. Then the king summoned all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. And the king went up to the temple of the Lord with all the people from Judah and Jerusalem, among them priests and the prophets, all the people from the least to the greatest. There the king read to them the entire book of the covenant that had been found in the Lord's temple. The king took his place of authority beside the pillar and renewed the covenant in the Lord's presence. He pledged to obey the Lord by keeping all his commands, laws, and decrees with all his heart and soul. In this way, he confirmed all the terms of the covenant that were written in the scroll, and all the people pledged themselves to the covenant. Now remember, Josiah read the same words that we put up on the screen, plus a lot more. And since God's word is true forever, let's commit to obeying God's word, just like Josiah and the others did. This week, take some time to write a prayer of commitment or draw a picture of you reading or obeying the Bible. So let's thank God now for his words. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for your eternal word. Thank you that it stands true now just as it did thousands of years ago. We commit to obeying your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, the Bible was written a long time ago about people who lived a long time ago. And there were a lot of things we have now that didn't exist when the Bible was written. Now, what are some of the things that we have now that people in Bible times didn't have? Okay, so let's think about it. We have cars to drive around with. We have electricity to keep our freezers running so that our ice cream stays cold. We have video games to play, smartphones to text people, and the list can go on and on. Now let's think about it. It seems like we don't have a lot in common with people in the Bible. Our world today has all these new things that they didn't even have. But Sonia, how could such an old book matter to our lives today? Boy, am I glad you asked that question. Let's dig into that. Let's start by thinking about what things we might have in common with people who lived a long time ago. For example, I bet they worried sometimes, just like we do. I can guarantee you they were happy sometimes, sometimes angry, sometimes sad, just like we can get. But you they had hope, and they probably even had to make a lot of tough decisions, just like we do. Again, we could go on and on. Now, if we think about it, it turns out that we have more in common with people from Bible times than we thought, even though the Bible may not talk about cars or cell phones. It does talk about a lot of things that apply to us today because they're timeless issues. So let's find out what the Bible says about some of the things that we made off. Okay, cars, Deuteronomy 6, 7. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home, when you are on the road, when you are going to bed, and when you are getting up. How about electricity? Matthew 5, 14. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. Screens, okay, phones, TVs, computers, so on. Matthew 6, 22, 23. Your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if that light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. So you see that even though they didn't have all the comforts we do, God's word still applies to us today. So now let's look at some of the things we have in common. Okay, happiness, 1 Thessalonians 5.16. Always be joyful. Tough choices, James 1-5. If you need wisdom, 
Ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. Worry. Matthew 6, 34. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Now, based on what you've read and what we've discussed, how do you think the Bible could matter for your life today? Technology and culture have changed, but people are people. And we face a lot of the same things that people in the Bible did. And that's why God's word matters to us, because God's word is true forever. Let's wrap this up in prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you that you loved, helped, provided, and were there for people in Bible times, just as you love, help, provide, and are here for us now. God, we thank you for the timeless truths we can find in your word, that it's as true today as it was when you first wrote it. Thank you that your word is true forever. In Jesus' name we pray, and all the children say, Amen. Thank you for tuning in this week. Until next time, remember that God's word is true forever. Ciao. We're discovering a brand new world as we dig a little deep.